Welcome, friends, to Seekers of the Eternal podcast, episode 47, with our guest, Robert Ryan, who is also known by his Sanskrit name, Shivanesh. This is Robert Ryan's second appearance on the Seekers of the Eternal podcast, and he is a renowned tattoo artist at Electric Tattoo in Asbury Park, New Jersey, with over 25 years of experience. He's also an incredibly prolific bhakti painter with a very distinct style that finds its roots in American traditional tattoo art that is uniquely blended with the Indian street painting style of Calcutta, India, known as Kaligat painting. Robert is a highly disciplined spiritual practitioner, kirtan musician, and devoted disciple of his guru. In this episode, I'm absolutely thrilled for this opportunity to talk with Robert about his latest artistic manifestation, the Tantra, Esoterica, Tarot Deck, and Guidebook. Together, we explore the universal nature of the tarot, along with its deep symbolism and how to utilize this ancient technology to help guide and inspire us on our own quests for greatness, no matter where we are on the journey. We also talk about the creative muse that fully captivated Robert during this project and what it took to channel the 78 hand-painted images for the deck and to publish a full guidebook with in-depth insights for each card in just a single year, while also tattooing clients regularly. And I personally feel so fortunate to have been able to have this conversation with Robert as I too am currently embarking on an enormous quest to channel an oracle deck and guidebook based on the hero's journey of the monkey god Hanuman. So this was a huge treat for me to learn one-on-one from such an experienced magician and artist. As always, this podcast is supported by our growing community of friends on Patreon. And here is where you can follow along with me on my quest with the Hanuman Oracle deck. You'll gain behind the scenes access to my entire creative process. You'll also have access to exclusive podcast episodes and community chat rooms where you can ask me anything. We'll also have live Zoom gatherings and audio downloads of guided meditations and visualizations that I'm creating. Members will also receive 15% off of all orders of my apparel, prints, and accessories in the Pale Horse online store. See the links below in the description, and I look forward to connecting with you more deeply on Patreon after you listen to this episode. Please remember to like and share this podcast to help us grow and to continue this mission of bringing more bliss calmness, play, and creativity into your everyday life. Now please enjoy this fascinating conversation with Robert Ryan. Fear not fellow seekers. Peace awaits you in the unknown. Welcome, everyone, to the Seekers of the Eternal podcast. I'm back with Robert Ryan, Shivanesh, and I'm really excited to have this conversation with Robert. Welcome to the podcast, brother. Thanks for having me back. It's an honor. Thank you. And this is a lot of great stuff that we're going to dive into. I just want to start out, as always, just by relaxing and releasing the tension in the body and just setting our intentions and starting with a short prayer to open up our time together. So let's sit with our eyes closed. If you can join us with your back in a straight line, we're just going to take in a short and long double inhalation, and then we're going to tense all the muscles in the body, and then we're going to exhale with a relax and release the tension. We're going to do that three times. So let's begin by just taking in a, a normal deep inhalation, breathing in, and all the way out. And now, double inhale, intense. Inhale. Low, medium, high tension in all the muscles. Vibrate and exhale. (sighs) Relax, release, feel. Again, inhale, intense. Low, medium, high. Vibrate with willingness and exhale. (sighs) Relax, release, feel. Last round, inhale, intense. Low, medium, high, just a bit higher, vibrate, and exhale. (sighs) Relax, release, feel. Divine Mother, awaken your love in us and teach us to awaken that love in all. 
Om Shanti Shanti. Peace. Amen. Ah. Well, last time I got to speak with you, Robert, we were talking about your book, Deity, back in 2022 in August. So it's been just under two years now since we last got together, which it doesn't feel like that long. <laughs> and that was a monumental feat, releasing the Deity book that we spoke about last time, which is favorite of mine and now as we're reconnecting again you just released another massive collection of artwork that you've been working on for a year I hear which is blowing my mind that this was accomplished in a year so the next project that you that you just release is the set of tarot card uh, paintings that you created and you released as a tarot deck along with a guidebook and that is the the tarot uh the the tarot tantra esoterica uh, which was inspired influenced by the one of the oldest decks still in production the tarot de Marseille, the de marseille marseille <laughs> yeah marseille. marseille yeah and and yeah so uh i'm really i'm really looking forward to diving into this uh, this process with you uh, of really what it would take to pull that off in one year is really amazing. I think maybe to begin, it would be good to just talk about your view of tarot and how you maybe personally use it as a tool in your own life. Because there's probably a lot of people that have um, maybe misconceptions about tarot, as well as maybe just no experience with it. And, you know, for, or maybe see it as something of superstition, or something that gets a, you know, like a bad rap, but I really see it, you know, um, just to, I'll give a little bit of uh, intro for, for, you know, my own ideas around this and some a couple of quotes that that um uh, were inspiring to me as i was thinking about getting into this with you um this is the first one is is by pd ospensky and this is from his book the symbolism of the tarot from 1913 he says tarot contains and expresses any doctrine to be found in our consciousness and in this sense it has all definite it has definiteness it represents nature in all the riches of its infinite possibilities, and there in it, as in nature, not one but all potential meanings, and these meanings are fluent and ever-changing, so the tarot cannot specifically be this or that, for it ever moves and is yet ever the same. And it, that sort of rings what the potentials here with it, that, you know, tarot really spreads across all so many different cultures and so many religions. So I'll kind of let you dive in um, with your thoughts around um, tarot, because it, I think it goes so much deeper than, than people realize if you haven't studied this. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful quote. You know, it's, um, it really, it sums it up for me on my relationship with the tarot because it was like, I wish I had read that quote before I started to be honest with you, because it was, um, it, it, I, I fought against a lot of that in the, in my process in making it because I am an acolyte when it comes to the tarot. I've always been attracted to the art of making, making, or, you know, like I always wanted to make it. I, I've tried quite a few times. I failed uh, uh, one time specifically very real, like fell flat on my face trying to make the tarot deck and it's been something that was kind of like uh gripping at my heart this entire time and uh when i finally had the opportunity to make it um you know i, I i've shared the story a, a couple of times but uh, someone who I, I met someone who had who had uh had become very successful in making the tarot a great artist and she encouraged me to make it and having heard it from someone who had had the experience of making the deck I was really moved to do it. And I, I, in that conversation, I had seen, you know, my idea, my 
understanding of the guru in what she was telling me, you know, the inner guru, you know, uh, manifests in the outer guru through so many different ways. You know, it could be your personal guru that you study under, or it could be uh, just an instantaneous interaction at the grocery store. Um, but but this was clear to me that it was my time to to make the, the tarot. So I went through this process, which reminded me a lot of the alchemical uh, marriage of Christian Rosencrantz, if you're familiar with that. You know, he, he gets invited to a wedding and he's reluctant to go and he goes through the, all these hardships of getting there and he ripped just to find out that it was his own wedding, you know, and he's, you know, he's marrying basically consciousness. And to me, that's what the tarot represents. And that quote that you just shared, I found it to be so strikingly true that any kind of spiritual technology that you would apply to the cards would somehow fundamentally fall into line with the teaching of that card. So for instance, I applied um, in the major arcana, the, the 10 Dasha Mahavidyas of the, of the goddess, and then the 10 Dasha avatars of Vishnu, which to, to me represent, and I know it's been said in certain schools that those are the 10 fingers and the 10 toes of the, of the divine, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that that's how I applied it. And each one would line up with that original, everything I read and studied about that original deck, that Merseille deck, um, that, that I really believe is embedded with uh, just subconscious archetypes and layers and layers and layers of understanding how each one of those archetypes uh, is involved in our life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so it's so so incredibly fascinating. I was just um reading the 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 different the different cultures that are believed that you know the tarot like the origins of the tarot that it's it's linked to Christian mysticism, Greek and Roman mythology, alchemy and astrology, ancient card games of Turkey and the Middle East. It's said to be a Western derivative of the I Ching. Some say it's descended even as the ancient, as, as the Egyptian hieroglyphics from the book of Thoth, uh, a visual interpretation of the Hebrew Torah or esoteric teachings of the Kabbal. And then now with, with your interpretation of it, with these images, including the Indian Vedas and the, the Sanatan Dharma, it, it all just, it just, when you start, it seems like once an artist has an idea around it and starts going on this journey with it. You just see how, just like Sanatana Dharma, the universal religion, it all just fits in with this this framework of life on Earth, of nature, of just the this this the similarities between it all. It's just really, really beautiful, incredible. Once you start that journey, it seems. Yeah, you know, I looked into um, Vedic tarot or um, Sanatana Dharma influenced tarot and I found um, a reference in an old tarot book from the early 1800s by Aleptus Levi and it had five cards of the major very um, very crudely drawn versions of the Dash avatars but that was it that's all I could find from like the ancient Vedic history um, there's some contemporary artists so over the last like 30, 40 years that have made um, cards that involve like the, the different Eastern deities and, and things like that. But this was, th these looked like they were, you know, definitely from antiquity. So that was kind of like the spark that got me. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, well, there's 22 uh, major cards and this is a, uh, you know, this is an opportunity to take, you know, have 20 different icons apply. And then I used Christ for the judgment card. And then I used Jagannath, Subhadra, Balaram, and the Siddharshan and Chakra for the four angels surrounding the world. And that's, the, those were my, my 22 additions to the major. Everything else I left as versions of the Merced deck. So mm -hmm. I wanted people that read the Merced deck to be able to still use it with that and maybe be informed by what I had added to it, 
but that it wouldn't affect their readings, especially if they already have like they're set in the way they read and they're experts at reading. What I have offered shouldn't take away from anything that they're going to share with who they're, who they're doing the reading for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like it just adds a richness to it, uh, it and a universality to it, and just this this uh, uh, more magic, I think, you know, and combining yeah. with your own personal journey and your relationship to it. So it, now it adds that uh, personal experience as well. I think is is really you know what? Um, unless you had something to say, I was thinking um, that what you did here is so similar to what you did here. <laughs> and, but in a way that it now is this living, interactive, and also very popular in today's culture, like tarot decks, oracle decks, you go to Barnes and Noble, there's a whole section, there's stores popped up with these decks, it's become very, very popular. And so in a way where maybe, maybe this is kind of fringe, and and maybe like not so many people like oh that's hinduism that's religion i'm i don't know if that's for me but then with the oracle deck that's come into popular appeal currently so now i feel like this is a way for people to interact with the artwork the symbol the symbolism within it and and then also to do what you wanted them to do with the artwork which is to absorb it to, think about the meaning of it how does this apply to my life how is this a mirror so now people are doing that with the cards which i'd love that's that's what the amazing technology of the cards is that it's like you know it it, it has that ability that you can look at something that can be completely unrelated to your life like let's be honest like uh, a lot of the imagery is from a time that we've never experienced you know king's court you know there's like you know people riding horses and there's armor and swords and things like that but how uncannily it applies to your life you know where and the symbolism you know that that you know we're all living in the court you know and we're all the fools in this world you know and we have the unpotential uh, uh un unmanifested potential for just about anything you know as soon as you walk out the door you could wind up you know uh chained to the devil or you can wind up uh you know embracing the world or becoming the world or being the, the king or the emperor of the world or you know there's just so many different i feel like we go through the course of all these things in a subtle way throughout each day of our lives you know and then you can really get heady about it and say like within each breath you know we're the emperors the wheel of fortune and the hanged man you know mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah the more that we pay attention to each moment the more opportunity we have to be any of those characters in the journey it is interesting how yeah, i love so how, how in, in the tarot that the fool is the zero zero card right yeah and the absolute move, zero <laughs> and then you move through the one two three of, of the phases and uh, maybe talk about a little bit of that the, the full the full beginning on the on the quest or the full just you know uh just uh naively moving through life and then and then beginning to on this quest even unknowingly sometimes yeah it takes that um bit of being naive and um kind of ignorant and uninformed to to have the wherewithal to 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 make it for this journey because if you truly knew what was in store in any kind of journey you're about to take in your life you might not go you know mm -hmm. if you if you realize how difficult it's going to be to get on a plane for 14 and a half hours to go to the place that you've always wanted to, to visit you might not go you know or um, you know, it, like I, I was talking to a friend about like, you probably wouldn't start a band if you knew how difficult it would be to be in a band, you know, you, of course, the joy uh, outweighs the difficulty, but just like the, to have that um, unknowingness when, when, when uh, setting off on the journey, it, it gives you that invigorating energy that like the potential for anything is available. 
And that's what the fool represents. But it's also the fool, you know, he's meeting all these characters on, on the path, but he's also each one of those characters. He becomes the magician. He becomes the empress. He becomes the hangman, you know? And like, for me, it's different personally. The way it relates to me is personal stages in my sadhana and in, in my practice, in my relationships, in my artwork, in what I'm creating and what I'm dealing with on the day-to-day -day level. So, and every one of those interactions that we might share with people, each person we meet leaves uh, some sort of impact or impression. And it's a good way to kind of cope or identify or be aware of those interactions that we have every day when we're on autopilot. Like, you know, we're we, if you pay attention, you could be like overlooking some really important things you know, and, and getting some real like gems and real like nuggets from people. Like when that, when Kim Kranz told me that I should paint the tarot, I did, you know, and now I'm here talking to you about it. I could have been like, nah, I don't want to try it again. Last time was so hard, but you know, I suck. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that self uh, deprecation and self conceit that Durga kills those demons, Shumba and Nishumba, you know, um, when, she just you know the just as as much as arrogance and being puffed up self-deprecation could be like one of the biggest challenges that the ego presents to oneself in the course of like creativity so um i think the tarot really helps you understand that like because you really start getting into these different layers of how certain people you meet might affect you or certain situations will affect you and the different, how it affects the samskaras and your karma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes me think of just no matter what artist that you're looking at, no matter what businessman or in, uh, entrepreneur or whatever it is, they are going through deep, deep, deep self-doubt work, you know, to go to, to create anything great in this world, like that resistance, that, that, you know that that devil card that comes up that just is trying to keep you from doing the work that opposite reaction it's equal and opposite the energy that you're putting in is going to get hit with an opposite reaction and it makes me think about the tarot as is giving us at least uh, a little bit of a of a of a view of what's to come you know this framework of the hero's journey okay know that when you're getting into this the demons, the monsters, the inner chatter, all of that is going to come, but you will also meet allies. You will also meet the magician You know, that yes. will come and help you and give you what you need to keep moving on. Yeah. And you realize that those demons and that inner chatter and all those things are, can also become the allies too. And that's something that you can learn through the tarot as well, like the devil card or the, the tower. You know, those are cards that people are normally kind of put off by or afraid of or deemed to be negative in a reading. And it's not necessarily the truth at all. They're actually really they could be like huge allies for you, you know, just as knowing uh, who the demons that you're about to fight um, could be like a, of a great significance for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like what you were saying earlier, um, you know, just as every saint was a sinner every emperor was a fool and every like you know uh like your uh, entrepreneur or political leader you know is probably riddled with self-doubt and confusion at every you know at some point in every day of their life but you know they've got the grace and the karma and you know the experience to to work through it whether they're doing good or bad they're, they're still you know that people are what they are for for uh, a reason you know mm -hmm. and that's why i think things like tarot are so important and cool for us so we can have this conversation you could hear about maybe there's something that you really want to do in your life and then you could use these cards and this book as a way to help guide you and then you could tune into other people who are also using tarot in that way i think it's a beautiful bridge because you know so many people and they're not ready to dive all the way into meditation. They're not ready to dive all the way into um, you know, rituals and mantras and all of this. 
But with this, with tarot, it's it's like a game and it fits so much like our life being a game. And it, I think it brings so much more like just fun and play to it where we can, this isn't so heavy. This is a light thing to see your life like a video game and to see that there are there is this framework. And for me, that framework brings so much comfort. I feel like I can now, having the comfort of this framework of the of the journey and seeing how everybody has it, it's like, oh, I just want to be in a symbiotic relationship with the source of that framework. And we can do that, you know? Yeah, we're all on the same stage, you know, in the same play, but we're all playing our own parts. And but we have to interact. And like, that's, that's also in the, the deck as well. There's a, a ton of like, these kind of more, uh, you know, almost like the, some of the, the scenes like the, um, uh, the chariot. In, in in that card and it, it uh it's a stage you know it looks like a vaudevillian stage and that person you know who who's the the charioteer is uh you know much like arjuna yes yeah I don't um the color one yeah I have my book yet but <laughs> yeah yeah you yeah. can even see like the um uh you know the curtains mm -hmm. there that you know so so the drama of, of life is is a, a big part of the tarot mm-hmm yeah, I love that. That that I love. Yeah, to, could you do you have the 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 book in front of you to kind of read a little bit of what you have for the chariot here? Yeah, uh, um, I I don't have it. Uh, I oh, I'm one. It's one minute away. If I could, if you want, yeah, to take maybe break. grab that. Like, cause I, yeah. um, I I love your writing, so I'd love to hear some of this directly from your book. It would be cool too. Okay, give me one second. It'll yeah. be less than a minute. Okay, sounds good. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So while you're while you're looking that one up, like I, so, the chariot is is one that I I pulled up just uh, I wanted to talk to you about. So I'm glad you brought that one up. I mean, I love the chariot obviously from the Bhagavad Gita, and I love that we've got Krishna here as the charioteer. That's that image of the 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 chariot also from the Katha Upanishad. Like just when I heard that, it just hit me so hard of this metaphor of the the horses as the five senses that are dragging us this way and that, and to learn to bridle the horses and to have these trained horses that could take us through life, you know. So I love I would love to hear your your uh, writing on this one. Yeah. So right away in with mine. I used the uh, red and blue for the horses, which would be the Ida and the Pingala, you mm. know, so, and then um, Krishna in the center being the Susumna. So that would be the, um, you know, our, the chariot is our breath, you know, the breath mm -hmm. is what brings us to consciousness. So yeah, I'll, I'll read a little bit about what I wrote. Um, it's broken down into different sections. So I'm just going to read a little bit from each section, maybe. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, keep brief. Whatever. Yeah, whatever okay. works for you. <clears throat> the chariot is a symbol of action. You can say that the vehicle is the body, the driver is the soul, and the horses are the breath. In this version, I chose to paint one horse red, the other blue, to express the ideas of the Ida the, and the Pingala, which are the two energetic streams that travel through the left or right sides of the body and unite around the center channel known as the Sushumna. As the pranic energy rises through the channels, they flourish in the chakra system, causing ecstatic states of consciousness, knowledge, and bliss. The vehicle is entrenched in the earth, which is a symbol, is which is symbolic of it being parked in its space in our everyday place of resonance. It is said that the chariot is moving upon its planetary axis, truly illustrating that this is our earthly vehicle and travels with us all states of mind and in all realities. So that's like the the description of the card. Then um, I I wrote about the tantric aspect of the card. Here you see Lord Krishna as the eighth avatar, avatar, the supreme personality of Godhead. In the psychological and spiritual evolution of the avatars at this point, we have gone all the way from the fish to the highest form of human incarnations, Lord Krishna. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, Kab the Kabbalistic aspect of the tarot is the um that the chariot is number 17 which is the letter is zion this is seen as the shape of the scepter of the charioteer the form of this letter is made up of two letters of the tetragrammatron vav crowned with the letter yud 
Zion meaning nourishment. Um, uh, med my meditation, this is the next section. So each section of the book is broken up into the description of the card, the tantric aspect of the card, the Kabbalistic aspect of the card, a meditation on the card, and then what it means in the reading, and then what it will mean in reverse. Mm, so my, me my meditation is onward we go. With each new day comes new opportunity for inner alignment. Through forward, through forward is our goal. All directions offer new perspectives. Though forward is our goal, all directions offer new perspective. Never doubt the momentum of the self. Even at a time of stasis or decay, we are alive. We are alive within rotation. Acceptance that the universal super soul is at the wheel, and we are the observer in the passenger seat, can free us from the past and future anxiety of attachment and regret. Freedom to let go to the reins and enjoy whenever we may arrive. Travel well with the heart content. Mm, man, I love that you have the meditations in there because I could really see these as, you know, like I, I like to give guided meditations. And then I also like to weave in some visuals and, and, and teachings like this. So imagining just getting people into a meditative state and then dropping these little meditations and visualizations into it to help you just absorb this could be really cool so i, I love those there i might i might uh, borrow some of those to drop in some of my meditations for people to me the meditations are probably the most important parts of the writing in this book just because mm -hmm. i feel like those for me were the true like what my experiential relationship to the to the art of the cards you know that's what i was thinking about when i was painting them or that's mm -hmm. what I got from painting it. So yeah, the other ones, you know, are, uh, alg you know, the rest of the writing is a lot of uh, amalgamation of information from all these different cultures. And, you know, I feel like the, the meditations are really like my true um, expression, uh, written expression of the cards. Yeah, yeah, because so often you look up, so I'll, I'll go online and get books and looking up things and look and so many people will just be listing like facts or <laughs> like this color means this, this means this, and you don't get that feeling from it. You don't get like, but, but, but how am I supposed to use this, you know, and I love that. That's that personal touch to it of this is what's coming through for me as an artist and how it's affecting me personally and how you could... Yeah, use it yourself and springboard from that into your own experience. Yeah, and I mean, all those facts and like, um, you know, codes are necessary for sure. I love, you know, those. That's... I love those too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you could also, yeah. you could you could spend your entire life there, you know, and mm -hmm. it, at, at some point, I do believe that that could probably serve as a distraction to what it really means, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like when when someone gets turned on to um, any kind of new information and they start seeing it, you know, in their life. And then when you see people that become over obsessed with that, you know, where they're starting to like really kind of, you know, just read in the clouds and everything they do. I feel like that there there needs to be a point where it's like, OK, you know, uh, I'm recognizing these things in my life i'm rec recognizing this aspect of understanding in my life but how does it apply to my life you know and and not being so caught up in the details of it and the nuance mm -hmm. Yeah, it reminds me of like when the Buddha arrives to 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 set the new stage It's and tell people it's not about just the rituals and the dogmas and, and just making sure everything's perfect and, and memorizing and knowing all of these these uh, facts about the, the practice. It's about the feeling of it. It's about actually experiencing it yourself. And so that's what it, it seems to kind of do here with the writing. That's that's bhavana, you know. That's that's the bhavana of of, of your practice. It, it's the intent and the sincerity that you approach something with. That that's really truly important. Uh, everyone mispronounces Sanskrit, you know. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. e even the best, you know. It, it it you know. Of course, you want to try to be as as close to the rituals as possible and to get the the essence of them. But uh, I think too many people get caught up in the details too yeah and what you just said there and combined with the meditation that you wrote there it makes me think about one of yogananda's my guru yogananda's quotes he says i'm happy because i'm doing my best 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. I love it. Just sums it up. You know, it's like, I'm doing my best. I love this. I'm doing my best. And so, and that's really kind of what, what Krishna represents there too. It's like, you know, Arjuna, he's in this just turmoil about what is right, what is wrong, all of this, but you're doing your best. You're keeping your eyes on Krishna. You're, you're allowed to be happy. Move forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so beautiful in the Bhagavad Gita, like how, you know, Krishna is giving him a very stern instruction, but he's also telling him, like, don't freak out over this. This isn't worth, you know, like you fought this battle many times and you're going to continue to fight it. You know, this is this is nothing new. This is nothing unique. Everyone goes, you know, like he, he's really coaching him through it in such a beautiful way, you know, and, you know, like he's panicking, you know, it, it, at the worst moment to panic. And when um, there, there's nothing more, nothing, you never get to experience yourself so far outside yourself than that moment of panic. You know, like anytime you're in a panic, like you are not yourself, you know, you're not being attentive to the needs of the self of consciousness or anything. You're panicking, you know, it, it, it's like a, it overrides the system, you know, and that's why Krishna is such a great chariot, you know, like uh, he's the master of the chariot, you know, because it, nothing is going to take krishna's mind you know like he, it, it's it's the perfect the perfection of desires the perfection of senses it, it, it's the supreme personality the perfected human that's what he is in the avatars that's as i mentioned you know like we start with the fish matya and then we move through the amphibian of korma then you get to the half half man half beast incarnations of narshima and uh varaha and then you get to the to the dwarf, you know, and then uh, then the hunter and gatherer, then Buddha and Krishna, you know. So it's like you get to uh, it. Sh it shows the evolution of consciousness through the avatars, and that's what you know. Krishna is the highest ideal. Mm, yeah, it, it makes me think about too. Say with with this tarot deck, with any tarot deck specifically this one you could think about just what 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 you were just saying there is like you're having this moment of freak out you want some you need some guidance in your life your your mind is scattered you're not taking in you're not seeing the opportunities you're not recognizing that you've been here before that this isn't a big deal just to relax and to move forward take a moment shuffle the deck take a breath put some intention into it and then ask that that higher self who is always even-minded and cheerful to give you a message, just like Krishna gave you a message there when you were Arjuna, you know, like you can use it in that way. I think this helps people to, to rock it through all of the, you know, the, all of say, say the things that we've gone through with our meditation practice and all of this to get into this bhavana. I feel like this tool with the tarot could help bridge that so that people could experience that very quickly. If you just are open to, to hearing a message from your higher self let the heart guide you know and instead of the mind and watch watch what amazing things start to happen in your life if you follow your heart rather than your thoughts mm -hmm. and it can move you from being wherever you are no matter who you you know like because everybody i think at first is like well who am i to 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 begin this path it's like begin as the fool and just re be open to receiving the guidance and know that, yeah, that as you move through, you'll move through these different stages and we're all headed towards becoming the sage, all of us. And you can take as long as you want because it's infinite. So play the game as long as you like. Uh, I'm, I'm going to segue into another card just because it, it feels like it's, it's the right time. Um, a chariot appears again in the hanged man card and that's with um now we're at the dasha mahavidyas the wisdom goddesses and that's um dumavati dumvati and she is in a in a chariot that's not being pulled by anything there's no horse sometimes you'll see it being pulled by a crow but it's usually the crow the crow is in the tarot that i painted the crow is there but it's not pulling the chariot and that's an also you know, the hangman is a suspended uh, moment and 
the chariot not being pulled by anything is that stasis, you know, th that stasis of like thing, things mm -hmm. being stuck or things being held or things being uh, focused at one point, you know? Yeah, we all know what that feels like. Yeah, yeah. it can be it can be a terrible thing for people, you know, it, it, working through being stuck or or it could be like a very illuminating thing where you've actually uh, stop and pay attention to something, you know? Mm, yeah. I think that's what the tarot can really help us to do is just, here's where you're at. It's okay. And, and the hangman, <laughs> you know, could, could be like a uh, suspended thought, suspended consciousness or something like that. But, but we're and a lot of people view the hangman as like he's hung there like as a punishment but from what i get from the tarot that it's a it's an austerity that he's hung himself there and then all the blood's rushing to his head you know it's it's a yogic you know it's it's like a sadhu you know mm. hanging upside down or uh standing on one leg or holding his arm up or sitting for a extended period of time or you know um i think it's an austerity and i think that 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 card represents austerity in a lot of ways mm, yeah i was at an ayahuasca ceremony a couple of weekends ago and it reminds me of that it's like okay go into the forest and drink ayahuasca that is like this austerity that allows you to just go through something that you feel like you're dying. You're going through a, a very, very difficult physically, mentally sitting for long periods of time. And then as the sun rises and the birds come out again, it's like that time that you spent there hanging upside down was so worth it because of the the the, the glory that comes from, from going through that challenge with an even mind and with purpose rather than um, seeing it as a negative. Yeah, it's it's tapasya, you know, it's it's the burning up of of things, you know, and it putting the body through discomfort to achieve um a higher goal is something that's been practiced for thousands and thousands of years. And um, you know, uh, that's definitely one example of it. Yeah, and just getting these little reminders. As is so, say 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 you're someone who has been going through chronic physical pain or something really difficult for a long time, and you're using the deck, and it's just a little reminder of that, so that you can appreciate what you're going through. So I mean, even like I love just having conversations with friends who are in tough, dark places, and just giving them a reminder of that, of like, look what you're going through. Like, this is great to pass you. Like yeah. you are burning karma. You are learning lessons. There is such beauty on the other end of this. And just getting that reminder for people, it's like, oh, wow. And I think that's, that's what these cards can do for you. You can just treat it like your friend that you call up and gives you this nice little reminder of uh, how it goes. Yeah. I, I, I think a lot about the term magic, um, and I think like the true definition of magic is that to shift one's perspective, you know, and that that might be sleight of hand or for me, it's uh, shifting some my own perspective it, or if there's something that could shift the perspective within me, it's usually something magical, you know, and that's what I, I feel the deck can offer to people. You know, and I'm not saying that mine is supercharged with anything more magical than another one. It's just the 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 um, what would you say? The schematic for magic is built into the cards. You know, with the, each each of the the characters. You know, if you're going by the the traditional major arcana, and you know, and the minor too. There's a lot of magic in there as well. But um, the the journey, the royal road of the tarot is a magical journey just as our lives are very magical journeys even the most mundane yeah like within it it contains elements of all experience so those are yeah. all available <laughs> yeah <laughs> you put exactly. that down. so the universe can work the universe can speak to you through your friends the universe can speak to you through a song that you hear the universe can speak to you through a, a situation that you're having and obviously the universe can speak to you through your cards the universe can speak to you through AI. The universe can speak to you yeah. through anything. 
So yeah, so this deck contains all uh, all possible situations and an encouragement for wherever you're at. So if you're open to it, it can hit you right where you're at, which is just so fascinating. Yeah, it, it's a great technology, and um, you know, like just like I feel like it's it can be applied just like mantra, just like other kinds of painting and art and music and uh, meditation. Like I, I think it's in the toolbox or the toolbox is available for anybody that is willing to, to, to listen to it. Mm -hmm. So now that we've, we've kind of talked about, about the, the, the tarot and the artwork, I'd love to, if you're open to it, I want to talk about your journey with this because one year to create to paint 78 pieces and to write this book. It's a lot of work. And I know that you also are a full-time tattoo artist. You're married, you have obligations. So, I mean, all of that together, and I know it, I know it, uh, I've heard you talk about it, how this has been a difficult period, but the, but I'd love to hear about how that happened um, maybe, and also to even, even like down to what your daily ritual looked like to pull that off and to get into, because I'll, I'll say also like I, the siren call of a project that <laughs> laser focuses one into just heeding that, <laughs> um, is like, I've been there and I know what that's like. And so I, I just like, you know, good or bad or whatever, I'll, I'd love to hear just what that was like for you and how did you pull this off? And I, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll start with the first the first version I painted was with some friends. We went to Mount Shasta and painted the major together and collaborated on it. And it was such a great experience to be up in the mountain, that mountain specifically, which is a, such a sacred, amazing place. And um, getting to know these guys and painting together is my friend um, Tomas Garcia, Adam Shrewsbury and Eric Van Bartholomus. And, um, we did it together, but then we discussed doing the minor afterwards and we never, never completed it, never got together. We talked about doing like a 10 year anniversary, go back, paint some more. Um, it just, life happens so cool. and, yeah. and never, never. So then I got hired by this company to, to paint a, a, a deck and it was a disaster. And then I tried again on my own one other time. Again, I got like two cards, three cards in and just it, it didn't go anywhere. So I met Kim Kranz at a friend's uh, dinner and she, she, she told me I should do it as an artistic practice and as like a spiritual practice that I would get a lot out of it. So mm -hmm. the magician, the ally. <laughs> yes. She, she was the magician. So, and um, she was also the dog that pushed me off the cliff and the full, full card, you know, like <laughs> she definitely, she, it was definitely the spark that I needed to hear. So I in, I was on the West Coast. I came back home to the East Coast and I, I immediately started painting the, the first day I got home and I got completely consumed with the idea of completing it. And the more cards I did, the more motivation I had, the more it fueled. So it was like building, like I was building up to it. But what I wasn't, and I was paying a lot of attention to this this art that I was making, um, I was doing like a, one a day. They're eighteen by twenty four. This is the major. The the first twenty two cards I painted mm -hmm. um, are eighteen by twenty four inch paintings. So I was doing like one of them a day every day I had off. So I, like three a week, um, which is you know mm -hmm. it, it's a pretty big end to draw them and like get them drafted and and also figure out what's you know. Uh, I don't, I didn't do much color studies, but I, you know, just the preliminary stuff that you need to do to make a painting. That's uh, a rapid you know, flow. Yeah. yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm spending like 40 to 50 hours a week on these things. And, um, uh, it, what, what I didn't realize as I was doing it was that I was living through each card and the meaning of each card and like all the stuff that happens in the tarot, I was the fool, you know, I, I stepped off the cliff and things were coming at me from all directions. And, um, it didn't really rear its head until I, I finished the painting when I started doing 
when I started working on the research for the book, I was like, oh my God, my life had fallen into shambles. Like my schedule was totally crazy from tattooing, from like, you know, I just wasn't being attentive to my my share of the business there. Um, my home life was crazier than it's ever been. Like I just wasn't like doing what I was supposed to be doing around the house. Um, just like all, every aspect of my uh responsibilities obligations and a lot of the things that i love in my life were like put on hold for the for this project and i didn't choose to do it you know like i it wasn't like I, i'm gonna make it i'm not gonna talk to anybody i'm gonna ignore everyone i'm just gonna do i didn't set out to do that it just the way it all happened and uh you know it wasn't until the very end of the writing of the book was like oh my goodness i've lived through the major arcana in in the creation of this thing and i guess that was what i had to go through to do it you know like you were saying the the hangman like i was i, I suspended everything else in order to achieve you know the world of completing the deck mm. <laughs> yeah he hearing your story about that because i i'm also the fool at this point venturing into a, a similar project of creating a, an oracle deck which i've signed myself up for yeah you mentioned that. Is, that that's amazing yeah so hearing this is very helpful for me because i'm at a place in my journey where my goal because i've i've done this before where i have completely been sucked into an idea a project a creative endeavor and I, and just like you were talking about, relationship is in the worst place possible, all of the other things in life I'm not paying attention to and just sucked into that. And so with this project, I'm actually making it also a conscious effort to this time not do that, to at the yeah. same time, wow, can I at the same time be fully, fully, fully in and uh, while I'm creating the work, while I'm in my meditations and asking for guidance, but then can I go out into the world and be fully present with my wife, with my friends, with uh, other uh, circumstances, situations and entertainment? Can I be present there and learn how to, say, put a force field around myself where I'm keeping this bhavana <laughs> while I'm still being present so that I don't have that, that period of like getting back into, because I feel like that maybe is the problem. Like if you want to pull this thing off in a year, it's like you almost have to like blinders to everything else and stay fully focused. But can you do both? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think about like um, the stories of like Ganesh eating, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he'll just won't stop eating like that. I was, that's how I felt. Like I was just nonstop consumption of the tarot mm. and, and painting of the tarot. But like, I think what, with you setting the intention that you just set and um, that what you just spoke about is probably the best way to approach it. I wish I would had been more aware because it does. I, I mean, I feel like what, what I went through in the making of it is what I needed to do for it to happen. But if I were to do it again, I would probably do it a lot differently, you know, and that's what I, what I've learned from it. And I'm, you know, I kind of swore that I probably wouldn't ever make another one. Um, but I, I, I've even talking to you about it today, it was like thinking about it, like my, maybe it would be nice just to have one, make one where I'm not completely, murdering myself in the process you know yeah that's how i feel so fortunate to be able to have this conversation with you and to hear your story because like as i venture out into this it's like oh be wary because i i as i've died, gone into this i see the draw of this or my muse or yeah. my daemon like just going okay you know it wants you yeah. all for itself it doesn't care what else you got going on and so at this, at hearing that story and then for, for myself, what I, what I'm doing with my project is a little different because I'm, I'm just, I'm just making it, this is a series of artwork that I'm making for this foreseeable future as myself, as an artist, when the deck comes out, it'll come out. 
I'm not mm -hmm. putting in a time limit on it. I'm going to sell prints of it. I'm going to, I'm created a, a community around it that can follow the journey as I'm doing it, that hopefully will support me as I make this work. I want to do guided meditations on each of the cards. I want to invite people to like go on this journey with me and to see what it's, see what it's like to create it. And then when it comes out, it comes out. That's the only way that I can see of doing it without going crazy myself. <laughs> yeah. If you, if, if it was your job just to do it, if you just made, you know, you're the tarot card painter, it would be a lot easier or the Oracle card painter, you know, mm -hmm. it'd be like, but you have your whole thing that you're doing as, aside from it as well. And um, yeah, it, I, I think you're right. I think that's probably the, the, the most realistic and uh, uh, the way it's going to, manifest itself in it, the it, the way it will manifest itself in the best way is the way that you're approaching it it doesn't have to be chaotic and uh you don't have to you know burn yourself up to do it mm. yeah i'm giving myself a sense of urgency about it like i want it to come yeah. through as fast as it possibly can and i want it to snowball like get faster and faster as i go yeah mm -hmm. that's and I'm that, well that as a, yeah as an artist you know that it's like the keeping the velocity how important that is mm -hmm. and how how fast it can drop off and that's what's right. happened to me with a, a few different kind of projects that i've taken on that had like kind of like you know some sort of uh extended goal you know where it's like i'm gonna do 20 of these or i'm gonna paint you know like paint like the the navadorgas like painting the the nine dorgas something like that like you know that, that you have to make these nine paintings and you can i tried to do them each day of navaratri um and that's really nice like to have that it's like a, a goal you set the goal but it's a, a achievable goal within two weeks you know but when you have to come up with 78 that's mm -hmm. the that's a, you know having that uh staring in the face every day can definitely like it's easy to get crushed under the wheels of that. Yes. Yeah. I like, I recognize yeah. how insane that really is. And for each of these two, like I also decided that I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to draw each of these as if it were a six foot tapestry. <laughs> yeah. Like each one of these are going to have all of the juice of the best illustration that I possibly could put into it. And so what I'm, what I've, the conversation that I've been having with, I, you know, I, I speak to the universe as my, my mother, my divine mother, and I tell her, you know, and in this idea, Yogananda would talk about willpower. The willpower is energy plus devotion directed towards fulfillment. So wow. keeping that energy flowing the whole time with the love and directing it at, I'm going to finish this thing. And I understand how much sustained energy it's going to take for the, however long this takes to pull it off. But I'm saying to my divine mother, just like a kid, I like to think of this analogy, like a kid that you tell your mom you want to do karate, right? I want to do karate. I want to do karate. <laughs> and then she gets you the karate gear, the gi, uh, pays for your lessons. And now all of a sudden you want to do something else. You're like, now I want to be a boy scout. You know, <laughs> now I, I want to play drums. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah, yeah. play. I want to play drums. I want to be in a band. I want this. And then your your divine mother stops. Your your you know your earthly mother stops giving you the 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 license to do these things. So for me, I'm like I've been on Hanuman for a long time, mother. Like I'm I'm really I really 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 want to do this. <laughs> you know, like I've made 600 images of Hanuman that I put out into the internet. I've been I've been fascinated with Hanuman for 20 years. I've been like obsessed with this story. I read it every day. I chant the Hanuman Chalisa every day. Like I, I really want to do it, Mom. Can you can you let me do this? Can you give me the energy? And that uh, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, then it it will be no doubt. You know, <laughs> with, with with that, you know, uh, with that kind of, already, you you've laid the groundwork for this to happen, um, which is amazing. For me, the tarot was like kind of getting into a lot of unknown territory. Um, so that would that's I think that made it a little bit more. I I was a little bit more con consumed by it, 
where you'll just have the inspiration upon them in every day, which you already have. So like you're already connected to that. So a lot, yeah, a lot of the ways for the tarot for me was like, some of it was a little bit hard and challenging to like, kind of like get my mind around and um, cause I wasn't as familiar with it as say like deity, which was just kind of like, I didn't deity. I probably did those paintings over the course of two years, but the writing was about the same amount of time, but I was like a lot more familiar with, uh, with uh, what was covered in that mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for doing that to Pasia to do this. And I feel so fortunate to hear your story and to get inspiration for how to do it. You know, I've never really verbalized it in that way before. So just being able to say that to you <laughs> makes it more real for me, you know, so that's a, I feel really fortunate to meet you magician. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited to see what you come up with. It sounds like a great, it's going to be really awesome. Yeah, I'm trying to do similar things like that of 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 showing that really in, in any just like in Sanatan Dharma, just like in tarot, just like in all of these traditions, how they all fall just right into this framework. I originally was thinking of doing a tarot, but then uh, as as time went on, I wanted the freedom to be able to tell the story of Hanuman, talk about his superpowers. Uh, talk about his friendships and those kind of things as well. So it feels like uh, just kind of going in that direction. Yeah, it, there's definitely with in choosing the tarot, there was like, I, I hate to use the word restrictions. I, w I wasn't restricted, but there were parameters that I had to work within that, you know, could be frustrating at times for sure. You know, it was like, oh, you know, like I wanted to maybe go a different direction with maybe one of the deities that I, I chose or something like that, but it had to stay within the framework of the card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes I guess giving yourself those parameters that you can't break out of also makes for great, great work that that uh, having that tradition. Um, that reminds me too of like, uh, maybe the next card that we, I'd love to maybe end with talking about this card, the 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 Hierophant, the, the sage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because he is really that upholder of tradition, uh, the sage that just carries through time, tradition, techniques wisdom the guru the 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 leader the the mentor uh the one that uh represents the the sacred rituals the established even that word religious dogma you know even it, it holding on to that like the dogma of the the tradition of the tarot cards it, it it's this way for a reason uh and and holding on to that to to help us to to be able to really um have clear true north sometimes you know if you're really if you're really following a true guru a true teacher upholder of the dharma then you can submit yourself to that 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 tradition that's just kind of what comes up for me yeah the, the harry of um he, he, that that term is started with the rider weight um in the Marseille deck he's the pope you know, so it's exactly as you said, there, there's even like that level of like dogma with him, you know, um, I would say that the Hierophant is more the pundit. And he a, a teacher a, and definitely a guru in the sense that, you know, he he's he, he's he's holding that information, you know, Um uh, he, he's like, he, he's, he, he's, uh, how would you say, you know, he's, he's the initiate, you know, and he, he's, he, he's able to initiate you into the, these practices and things like that. You know, he, he, it's, it's the first kind of, uh, spiritual person. They're all spiritual figures. The magician's a spiritual figure as well, but uh, more the more orthodox, maybe the more mo first religious figure that the fool meets on the royal road, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but then the hermit, I think, is, is the it, fully awakened. It, is the <laughs> yeah. guru. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, okay. Um, and I don't, they're not, they're both uh, wearing one glove, the blue glove, which is like the, the symbol of initiation in uh the old you know church days old time religion stuff um but it they're they're both initiates in their own way but i think 
you know, the Hierophant is more acting within the, the t like the more Brahminical way or the more Orthodox style where the guru is the, he's, or the hermit is more the guru, like who's on his own, you know, like he's the, he's the Sita, the Mahasita where, mm. you know, mm -hmm. but they're, but they're both completely, um they're not mutually exclusive you know they're both gurus and they're both the guru um in the story but they act in different ways you know one more of uh the the teaching and the history and the uh preservation of the rituals where one is teaching you about the inner reflection you know so uh yeah. uh the hierophant is uh parashu uh, rama uh that that avatar who's you know uh the hunter and gatherer of the spiritual evolution and the buddha i have with the hermit because the mm. buddha is is uh you know you, we take uh shelter in the hermitage of the of the buddha mm, yeah it's like neem karoli baba just sitting in his uh, village in india not not telling anybody not even wanting anybody to know that he's there but the effect that he has even it just is spawned out to uh, around the globe yeah and he's touching uh all kinds of people not just uh seekers of that one uh style of dharma you know he, he's touching christians and householding westerners and and monks so it makes me think about too the the different ages. So so say say in the in the material age where the 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 sages and the saints, those who are looking to become saints, have to leave the world behind and go into the caves. They have to go into the 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 the, the monasteries or separate from the world. Where now in this age, seemingly we can be householders and still be going towards that same goal of enlightenment. And we're also called to share. We're also called to share what we're learning with others to do things. Maybe we don't want to do. I would so much rather just be doing my meditation alone and not be doing all of these things in the world. But it seems like in this, in this age, we're being called to do that. Uh, I feel like, I feel like I've had my Kali Yuga meditation cave time. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like, okay, Shiva, you got to come out of the woods and to do it here with a family. And that's kind of like what I'm thinking about too with this is just come out, be around other people, share it with people, be in the world, all of that. Arjuna much would have much rather have been in a quiet place of meditation <laughs> than on the battlefield. And Krishna tells him, you know, you're, that's not who you are. That's false renunciation. And the Bhagavad Gita is a great uh, example of what, how not to be a false renunciate. Hmm. You know, it teaches you all the yogas for any any, any lifestyle that you have. You know, um, you could be a householder, you could be a car dealer, you can be, you know, whatever, a policeman, uh, you could be in the military what, what whatever it might be and there's a yoga for you and th there's a way for you to connect with your consciousness and the, i think that that's the beauty of the bhagavad-gita you know like that it it, it it there's so much mercy there that you don't have to become a monk you don't have to become a hermit you don't have to become a hero font you can be you know as long as you're willing to participate there's a yoga there for you. Mm, yeah. And, and, and what it is that, that wants to happen in your life will, will be naturally what you, you've always been shift. You, you've been sculpted and, and, and all of the things that have been happening in your life have been transforming you into this perfect being to do that work that you're supposed to be doing. And it won't feel like you're, yeah, it, it, it's just, a, it's just amazing how it, how it all works. And I think this, this working with the tarot helps us to, to just see that all along we have been being shaped and molded and we have been on this journey. We have been answering the call and we are perfect. <laughs> just yeah, keep doing many, your best. How many magicians have you met along the way? I know I've met quite a few and mm -hmm. like that had huge impact. And I mean, magician in the sense of the card where he's the influence he's he's showing 
on the magician's table are the four suits of the tarot. So he's showing you what the tools that you you can use to apply for a life of self reflection. And um, I've met quite a few people that, sh that, that gave me different tools for that. And, you know, they, they've been super important and to be able to look back at them while painting the magician card and studying about the magician. And then when that card appears, I think of them all the time and, you know, they're, they're the, they're the sparks in my life that keep the flame burning. Mm, yeah. It, it, it's like when you have that lens to look through, your life becomes like the movies that you love to watch. Your life becomes yeah. like this thing. And if you can watch it and see it and expect it and be on the lookout for it, man, it's just like, oh, we're playing now. We're doing it again. We're doing it the right way. <laughs> like, I feel like our souls come to this earth and we knew it was a game. And then over time, we get afraid because of, okay, so here, this, maybe thinking of it like this way, the fool, you know, just comes into the world. It's this virtual reality video game. Have at it. Mom just sends you out into the world. Do whatever you like. Go look for happiness and everything that you can find. You know, at first, you're really nice and sweet and doing nice and sweet things. And then over time, you start doing a bunch of mischievous things. And then the world starts responding over time. Just now you got all this stuff coming at you all the time. You get afraid and then you get angry and then you start fighting back. And then you forgot that you were in this fun video game all along and you were supposed to play it. You hear a conversation like this. You maybe start incorporating tarot into your life. You start getting to a sense of the framework and how it works and you get these little messages and you start to see, okay, here's where I'm at. And then just work your way back up to realizing we're just in a fun video game and relax. Let's have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The tarot is like a uh, breadcrumbs to leading you on the path back to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Well, I, I love this. Thank you. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. And um, I ordered the, the 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 deck and the book. I can't wait to get it. I you should probably have it today that. or tomorrow. Um, oh. I know they, they started shipping yesterday uh, on Saturday. So. Oh, so cool. So yeah, let everybody know where they can get this. I'll put some links down at the bottom as well. And also you have some some uh, original artwork that still there's still a few of those available if people want to get an yeah. original painting. Yeah, for the next, I think for the next week, um, it'll be up on the site until the next show happens at their gallery. Um, it's Raking Light Projects is the website and the company that that puts out so many beautiful, amazing prints and books by and apparel by great artists. Um, and so you can get it through there. And then the show is at Raking Light's gallery in west hollywood it's it's up for another week and you can visit it online too there's there's um there's a link to where you can buy original artwork at raking light projects.com and you can get the book and the you can get the book or the deck or you can get the book and the deck and there's still some bundles available that will come with the free bag too along with the two mm, awesome yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting that. And I can't wait to see what we talk about next time we get together. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> sure and I, I, I'm project. really looking I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with and uh, touching base on that. And yeah, we'll talk soon. It's always a pleasure talking with you. And uh, it's always inspiring. And it was great to even just like reflect back on my experience and what you're embarking on Uh you know, it's, it's cool to share that together. Yeah. Thank you, man. I, I'll, I'll probably be reaching out and asking you questions along the way as well. Like, <laughs> Don't do it. it. No, right? <laughs> That's what I always tell people when I get into something, I'm like, do not. <laughs> who, who said it? Uh, if you're going to approach this, approach it with the intensity of a madman whose hair is on fire. <laughs> I forget. It was one of the saints that said that if, if you're going to, if you're going to get involved with this, you better approach it with the intensity of a man, man with his hair on fire. I got that on tap. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a good oh, one. Yeah. Thank Adios. you. Yeah. I wanted to end here just with, um, I always like to end with a little quote from Yogananda here from his book okay. here. 
Um, just to, I think this one is a nice one to to end it with and to send everybody off. And by the way, the the music that we play at the beginning of the podcast and at the end is, is Summer Roberts' music from his band Soma, and I would recommend checking that out. Oh, can I just add real quick? We have yeah. a new album coming out called Burning is Learning. Um, cool. And it's, be, it's being released on the Equinox uh, this month. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, please check out that music. And I can't wait to get that one because I've been enjoying the last release from you. It is a nice combination of just... it's As, as I get more sincere with my meditation practice and become lighter... My my musical tastes have changed and changed over to, you know so rapidly. <laughs> so have your music too. It's like this nice bridge in between that can lead you into this medicine music, this 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 this, this spiritual music. And I feel like it has notes of you know the old type of like stoner rock that I used to love that moves you into this this spiritual uh, kirtan. So I, I recommend people checking that out as your as your musical cha- taste change as you get more light. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> the words from Yogananda from his book, How to Awaken to Your True Potential, which I think that is appropriate. He says, under all circumstances, you must be calm and self-possessed. Even if storms of trials come, you must be able to calmly steer the ship of concentration to the shores of blessedness. The ordinary person is influenced by his environment. The man of concentration shapes his life. It shapes his own life. He plans the day, and at the end of the day, he finds his plans completed and himself nearer to God and to the goal. You must blame no one but yourself for your troubles. Every morning, make up your mind that you're going to be kind to your friends and enemies alike, to meditate more deeply than the day before, to know something about good books and so forth. Analyze yourself and find out whether you have been progressing or not. You must not lead a stagnant existence. Every day, spur yourself onto greater achievements. Om. Om. <laughs> Beautiful. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Joy to everyone. And we'll see you again next time.